I think that Iran is jealous of the success of the Kurdistan region. Uh, and I would suggest that the most important thing that Kurdistan's leaders can do is continue their good efforts to build their own region uh, as an island of peace and stability and not get drawn into this conflict. We've seen this with the Houthis uh, off of Yemen and the Red Sea, desperate to show that they are leaders in the region, they are relevant. Uh, and these actions uh, are like throwing gasoline onto a burning flame. Uh, so calm leadership is what's called for now. And the greatest revenge that the Kurdistan region can have is to continue to be successful and to build strength at home. Uh, I think it's encouraging that I believe uh, the Iraqi government is recalling its ambassador to Iran. That's a signal that business as usual cannot go on because it is a humiliation to the Iraqi state uh, to have this kind of thing happen, this assault on uh, its uh, territorial integrity uh, and so forth. So um, this is a time for calm, cool leadership. While the whole region around you is uh, on fire, it's important not to get pulled into that fire. Can you imagine what life would be like if there were not American-Kurdish friendship and what Iran and others would do uh, if they had a free hand to do so? So this is a convenient excuse uh, for the Iranians. Um, in terms of what the U.S. will do, once again, it's important not to play into the hands of the Iranian aggressors. Uh, and probably the last thing you need is to have a very public, very overt display of American military force at this time in the region. You always have to think through, and I don't have to tell you, you've lived through things that can happen if you don't think the consequences through. There needs to be a successful plan of action close cooperation between uh, the U.S. and our regional partners and calm heads, especially at this time in the last hundred days, ever since Hamas's attack on Israel. Uh, you can see that the forces that are trying to destabilize uh, the Middle East are in a desperate effort. Uh, and so it's important for all the powers that want stability and peace to be calm and to take measured steps and think twice and three times before taking serious action. Increased close cooperation with Kurdish officials is number one. I think the U.S. now really understands, hopefully we never forgot, but sometimes people forget how important Kurdish allies are to the United States and our long-term interests. Uh, and, and how that is a key to Middle East peace and stability. So this is a reminder, when bad things happen in the neighborhood, uh, American officials all of a sudden understand how important uh, our Kurdish allies are. In terms of American actions, there are two uh, U.S. carrier uh, strike forces in the region. So forces there, there's intelligence collection going on at a very high rate so that we can have visibility on the situation. And as you saw recently, actions were taken against Iranian proxies in the Red Sea. So uh, the U.S. is taking measured steps uh, and I think close consultations between the U.S. and Kurdish officials and Iraqi officials and also our allies in the region. Um, and, uh, anyone that has an interest in making sure that chaos does not prevail in the Middle East. We all have to work together and have open lines of communication at this time uh, because it's particularly challenging. And as we know from history, things can always get worse. So we must think through every action that we take before we take it. Yes, for sure. And that, that is uh, sharing some intelligence and working together to collect intelligence. and that, it's time to do maybe more and look at air defenses around key installations in the region. Uh, we see now with the development of drones and missiles 
you, know, you, you cannot be vulnerable to these kind of strikes. And the U.S. has offered uh, assistance and protection uh, to allies uh, from Ukraine to Taiwan uh, to uh, others in the Middle East um, that we know of. And I think it's uh, time that the U.S. works closely with friendly forces everywhere, forces that are interested in showing, um, uh, supporting stability uh, and working with us, that they can be protected from these kind of attacks. So I would suggest that our Pentagon planners and others should be working even more closely uh, with Kurdish forces and others in the region. Yes, we should be ashamed that we cannot move quicker in our U.S. Congress. Uh, it's a real test of American leadership, and America's friends across the world need our help. And it's time for the U.S. Congress to take action and move those kind of, that kind of assistance and President Biden's security package, move it forward. Uh, because this should be something that Americans understand. The world uh, is not always stable, and we cannot take it for granted. Coming from America, we think uh, uh, that peace is the usual way of the world. That's not so. You and I know that. We have to work hard with our partners, and we should give you the tools to protect your country. Well, that relationship between the U.S. and and uh, the Kurdish people is one that is in America's interest. And we have to tell that story more in the United States. Uh, you're a heroic people, uh, and uh, you fight for yourselves and your own freedom. Uh, but you also fight, you fought on behalf of the world to defeat ISIS as well. Um, and now you're absorbing blows from, um, from an aggressive power next door. So these are heroic things, just as they are with the Ukrainian people. Uh, and we need to make common cause with people around the world who uh, face down aggressive powers uh, anywhere they can be found. So uh, we in the U.S. have to do a better job of uh, talking with the American people about why this relationship matters so much. Uh, but, you know, this is the thing the U.S. people often want to close their eyes to what's going on in the world because we, we have a lot of great things in our country and we don't want to think of the hard things in the world. But if we care about our children and our grandchildren, we have to build uh, strong alliances around the world to keep the peace. And Kurdistan is a foundation of that structure uh, in the Middle East today and I think for years to come. There are a lot of people that work hard on this and know more than I do, but I would suggest to you that the more the story of the Kurdish people and your recent history is told in the U.S., the better. Uh, and keeping that relationship with, uh, you know, all political forces in the U.S. Um, and learning more about the U.S. and our politics, what, make, what is important to us, uh, and showing it that it's in our interest in America to support you. It's not that you're coming with your hand out. In fact, you're doing favors that help America's security. And that's what the story that needs to be told. Because otherwise, America has 50 countries that may be asking for help and assistance. But instead, this should be uh, why you're helping uh, America's security by what you do for yourselves. And this is, these are things Kurdistan would be doing for itself. But anyway, I, I would suggest to you that uh, the story is being told in Washington and other places. It's a, it should be a high priority uh, for the Kurdish people. It's, it's uh, time well spent and resources well spent to try to engage uh, Americans and the American people to tell your story in any way you can. And there should be more links between universities and businesses everything to try to have a long-term strategic partnership between our peoples, not just officials, but our peoples. Well, you know, the United States is a democracy. Our people looked and saw 10 years of involvement uh, in Iraq and uh, the loss of about, I think, 4,000 combat troops and tens of thousands of American soldiers who were wounded uh, some severely and probably 100,000 or more with, uh, you know, psychological challenges after the involvement. 
and oh, I don't know, maybe $500 billion of investment. So um, that was designed to give Iraq a chance after the fall of Saddam Hussein. Uh, and there were a lot of unintended consequences. I think the U.S. is not great at figuring out all the forces at play in the Middle East. That's why we should always be listening to our real friends, and the Kurds are amongst them, that can help us think through what to do. Uh, and sometimes the U.S. Uh, thinks we know exactly what to do, but we should listen to our friends more. So I think I would say much uh, sacrifice was made by uh, the American people uh, in an effort to try to have better days for people in Iraq. But yes, you can see that uh, there was some Iranian advantage gained strategically. And yet still, here stands Kurdistan, uh, still filled with free people. Uh, and there's an Iraqi state that exists, not, uh, you know, it, it's doing the best it can. And uh, so Iran continues, and I don't know how they've improved the lives of their people in the last 10 or 20 years. They've spent a lot of money trying to pour gasoline on fires across the Middle East. And people are beginning to see uh, what their game is. And I don't think it's a very smart game. I don't see that. I think that we have uh, too many important interests here uh, for there not to be uh, continued engagement and presence. It's in U.S. interest to know what's going on in this region because there are enemies of the United States. So we need to know to be here to know what's going on and to support our friends. Um, so, you know, through uh, how many administrations, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, the levels of engagement and support have changed, and yet still, and now Biden, the, the, uh, the U.S. is still engaged. All kinds of talk about only paying attention to the Pacific region. I think what we really know, and the next American president needs to be honest uh, and straightforward about this, um, that we have to come to uh, the support of uh, free peoples everywhere. Uh, and when we do that, we make ourselves safer and the world safer. And as a, a free people, we can explain that to our population. Just playing a strategic game, the American people won't, won't uh, support that over a long period. But if you explain why it's important, then they're likely to uh, keep staying with our friends. Thank you. It's a pleasure.